My name is Dr. Michael A. Picos of the Picos Institute here in Trinity, Florida. And I'm here to share with you some information regarding a novel approach to pain control and wound healing. Something rather unique, uh, to say the least, in terms of some strategies that we've used in our private practice now for about three years. In case you're not aware, and I can't imagine anybody in this day and age would not be aware of a very sad fact for the United States, and that is that we have a significant opioid crisis. In fact, uh, of all the civilized countries of the world, we're pretty much an outlier. No one else, no other country, no civilized country certainly has the issue that we have. And unfortunately, as you see here on the slide, four out of five heroin users actually started out misusing prescription painkillers, which is sad. So those of us in medicine and dentistry, uh, certainly we play a, a role in uh, at least helping out with this crisis, in my humble opinion. And therefore, uh, I would like to share with you this information that may be of help to um, hopefully a number of you. First things first, an alarming um, graph I can share with you from this study done just a few years ago showing treatment sought by different substance abuse um, items. And more specifically, this really is graphically um, remarkable for us in that, as you'll see here in 2014, uh, folks who sought treatment for opioid use actually outnumbered those seeking alcohol abuse uh, issue or treatment. So that trend, by the way, has continued to the present here now in 2020. So for the past six years, an alarming trend and one that we certainly have to uh, deal with. Now the good news, at least as I see it now, um, one strategy that we've been able to utilize to help combat this opioid crisis issue by accelerating healing, relieving pain, and significantly reducing or in some cases eliminating the need for narcotic pain medications and steroids. So in a nutshell, that's really what this company is all about. And I think the best way to more or less address the issue of what Stella Life is all about is I think by basically looking at 10 frequently asked questions as you see here. These are questions that are asked all the time by individuals who are first looking at potentially using uh, these different uh, meds. So therefore, let's address them one by one. So relieving pain, decreasing swelling and even bruising, accelerating wound healing, and reducing the need for opioid meds in general. I think that's pretty remarkable. And this complex of meds really has um, made a huge difference for us and our patients, no question. Uh, from my private practice and introducing also the Stella Life Complex into our institute uh, curriculum. In fact, there's some great science behind uh, using this product. So again, enhanced wound healing, antibacterial properties, anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory, and analgesic. So important uh, to be able to hang your hat on different studies that can validate the use of Stella Life for this application. So looking at the rinse initially, we can see active ingredients are listed here on the slide. And you can certainly look at that more critically on your own time. There's a spray, and you can see the active ingredients here are even greater than with the, uh, the rinse. And finally, the gel, which has essentially the same active ingredients as the spray. As you can see, there are surgical and non-surgical procedures used for so many different hard and soft tissue grafting procedures. But in a nutshell, post-surgical, for all the work that we do in the oral cavity, I don't believe there's any particular procedure that really wouldn't warrant its use. I cover this in a broad uh, uh, way in saying that any oral surgical procedure, hard or, and or soft tissue based, uh, would warrant its use. Now that said, if we look specifically at surgical procedures, my goodness, the list really would be limitless. Um, it just depends on what procedures we want to talk about. From both, again, a hard and soft tissue perspective, there's a broad spectrum of, of application, certainly. Uh, just to give you a few examples from my own practice, uh, here we see a vestibuloplasty with Elloderm. I've used this technique since 1999 and have done hundreds of cases like this. But what I've 
noticed in these three years of using Stella Life specifically for this procedure is, as you'll see, time zero versus five minutes later on the right-hand uh, image, you can see the homeostatic, or I should say the hemostatic effect of using Stella Life. And that's one of the neat properties right up front. We'll apply this gel uh, postoperatively for all of our patients and basically waiting four to five minutes of time with some pressure and gauze. And then I say with pressure, I mean just light pressure, just enough to hold the gel in place. And then five minutes later, you can see uh, tremendous um, hemostasis. That's one big advantage, certainly, and um, of using it. Here, post-extraction and grafting with uh, membranes, uh, these um, uh, PTFE membranes, you're, you're seeing time zero um, on the second image from the left and using the, uh, a cotton applicator, basically a cotton swab for, uh, Q-tip rather, for applying the gel. And then the extreme left image, you can see just a few minutes later, uh, again, the hemostatic effect. Tissue color looks good. And then at six weeks uh, on the right side, you can see the images of the membrane in place and then removing the membrane. So the tissue, uh, the effect on the soft tissues is really very dramatic uh, with any procedure that we do. This is a case where we had an elderly woman who just did not want this torus removed at all. We kind of went around and around. Uh, I was extracting um, a bicuspid tooth in this site and um, I was more or less salivating at the thought of just let me just get this bone reduced. It will make it so much better all the way around. Uh, in anticipation of implant placement, but she resisted and therefore being a tissue, a thin tissue type over these tori, which we typically see. Here you're seeing uh, fenestration, the hissance uh, of the uh, site and exposed bone, of course, and different time intervals having used the Stella life throughout. The main point in bringing this up is it accelerated wound healing, I think, to a point, but she was very comfortable throughout which is uh, quite uh, remarkable, because typically these types of um, ulcerations can result in a fair amount of discomfort. And there's finally at four and a half months um, healing up rather nicely and flaking off the uh, residual uh, necrotic bone. And now looking at a post-extraction site in general, grafting, um, and again, a five minute follow-up, we can see once again the tissue color looking good and, uh, and hemostasis certainly and still another uh, split mouth, just trying to get a good idea of is there really a, a, a good effect um, post-op in just five minutes time or not. And certainly our full arch cases, we use Stella immediately, I should say routinely. Uh, we'll start them in advance as I'll explain the protocol here in just a bit, but definitely at time of surgery, we apply the gel as you see here. And in this particular uh, case, only 48 hours later, you can appreciate the remarkable tissue color and texture, uh, kind of appreciated even from, the, from an image like this, uh, we routinely see excellent uh, soft tissue effects from uh, using Stella Life. And still another case where failed um, axial placed implants in this severely atrophic mandible where the patient really was at risk for fracture. Uh, we removed these implants and um, performed a different procedure after several months of healing. As you see here, a mandibular tripodial subperiosteal implant. Been doing this surgery since 1990. Have almost 200 cases now uh, to date. Uh, a wonderful um, modality, custom implant uh, for each of our patients, allowing a severely atrophic mandibular scenario to be treated very effectively, very predictably uh, with a very stable custom implant, thanks to CAD CAM technology. Our first 15 years, we would take two impressions, or I should say we had two surgical procedures, actually took rubber base impressions with custom trays in phase one treatment, and then several weeks later, opened up again to place the implant. Now it's only one surgery, but in showing you this case, you can appreciate the soft tissue um, effects here, immediate post-op, and here's four weeks later. But most importantly, as you're gonna hear from her, Peg was just very, very ecstatic about uh, the Stella life itself. And uh, in her own words, unprompted, she'll tell you her story. So Ms. Peg, this is two weeks since we did the surgery. Correct. And as you may remember, 
Uh, this is a subperiosteal implant, fancy name for a uh, procedure that we do where we open up the entire lower jaw and place this implant that has been made in advance. Right. Custom to your jaw only. It's very invasive surgery. 800 milligrams of Motrin every, actually cut it in half and took it every four hours instead okay. of every eight. And it helped. It really got us through it. But the best experience was with the Stella Life. That really? was amazing. Oh. It managed to calm down the ache. Now, did you use all three? I used all three you? in sequence. The spur, the, so uh, rinse, we did the rinse the spray, first the for a couple minutes. Then I did Great. the spray and let it settle in. And then I did the gel. And the gel managed to calm down the nerve, the, all of the tissues and make them feel soft and comfortable. Great. And it, I was blown away by it. Excellent. I, I just love anything natural. Excellent. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I can't take a lot of stuff. So you just heard from Peg, and uh, again, unsolicited, she's in love with the product, and this is so true for so many of our patients. But again, non-surgical procedures, how about application for Stella Life here? Well, yes, in fact, dry mouth, um, any chronic ulcerations of the mouth, be they aphthous ulcers, uh, they can be post-chemotherapy uh, ulcerations of the mouth, uh, cold sores, uh, erosive lichen planus, et cetera, et cetera. All of these conditions can be very nicely treated with the use uh, of Stella Life. Another good question would be, is it in fact bactericidal? Well, a number of studies have actually shown that yes, in fact, it's very effective against a number of different bugs. And as you see here, listed are four of uh, very common ones that uh, are found in the mouth, uh, different pathogens that, um, that Stella Life is very effective against, in fact, it, actually bactericidal. Does Stella Life really reduce the need for opioids? That from 15 to 2016 to 2017, there's a significant drop in the dispensation of, of uh, the opioid meds to the point of 73% within a two year time frame. And I will tell you from our personal um, experience in three years use um, within our practice, that we've seen a significant decrease at least in that 70% plus range ourselves in terms of dispensing opioid meds. So as you'll see, our regimen has changed and for a good reason. And Stella Life really has played a huge role in, in this particular uh, protocol change. Here we have Cameron Lee and John Suzuki evaluated uh, in essence uh, 34 different patients, randomly divided them to two groups. Group A of 14 patients, group uh, B had 20. And these, the procedures done on all these patients were essentially many of their block autographs. And in group A, they were provided the opioid-free regimen uh, three days prior to surgery, whereas group B, of course, had only opioid analgesic. Group A uh, that received the three days pre-med cell of life, the median time interval to the use of the first opioid rescue analgesic after surgery was 4.3 hours versus the opioid group, and it was 1.9 hours. And average number of opioid rescue analgesics consumed was 2.3 tabs over a three-day time frame versus uh, group B, 7.1. The results of this pilot study really support the need for a novel alternative and complementary analgesic strategies, no question, uh, because less consumption of opioids was um, found for sure, and an increased time interval to the first use of opioid analgesics post-op. The use of Stella Life for a procedure that can be very uh, traumatic in terms of pain, uh, inflicting pain post-operatively, what our patients go through in harvesting uh, autogenous block bone from the mandible. And Jason did a beautiful study, 150 patients, split mouth, where as you see here, he compared Stella Life on one half of his patient uh, side versus a series of different um, items that were used uh, from basically Paradex, PRGF, Perio Sciences, PRP, and even Emdegain. And in every case, in every case, he, f he reported that the pain level, uh, was a pain level of five or less on day one uh, and less than three other days comparing to seven as anticipated. So uh, results were rather remarkable to say the least. And again, back to Walter Thatch with a third molar extraction study that he 
uh, did and reported on in our uh, Journal of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery. In essence, um, found, and by the way, third molar surgery ranks right up there with the most invasive procedures that we do in terms of inflicting post-op pain on our patients. And he found that, in a nutshell, that his patients recovered at least one to two days more quickly when compared to his, um, his non-stellar uh, group of patients. So uh, we have third molar application uh, studies, we have mandibular block graft studies, and of course, a host of soft tissue work done by Dr. Stoner to validate, uh, again, the use of Stella Life for different procedures that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So what is the pain pack protocol? Well, in a nutshell, it really involves using ibuprofen and acetaminophen. And these meds are recommended to be given in the following way, and that is ibuprofen, more or less will write a script for um, 800 milligrams, and they're to take one of those, followed approximately an hour, hour and a half later by two 500 milligram tabs of acetaminophen Tylenol. Again, over the counter, both are over the counter more or less, but as we know, ibuprofen only comes in 200 milligram tabs, or rather than have our patients take four tabs, they'll take one that we give them uh, Rx wise. So those two meds are given, a pro or rather should be taken approximately an hour and a half apart, and then that dose repeated uh, six to eight hours later. And in essence, we'll only write for maybe four to six uh, Norco pills, if you will, the hydrocodone. And we ask our patients to cut those in half and use them only at night. And uh, don't call me, by the way. We'll call you to check on you, sure. But don't be calling for more meds. And guess what? Even with third motor removal, this protocol works beautifully. So combine the pain pack protocol along with our Stella Life strategy. I'll tell you what, uh, that's a great one-two punch that really can combat virtually any procedure in terms of post-op pain management, really be able to deal with it quite effectively. So question eight is an interesting one. Um, a number of folks over the years I have found will ask this question, um, more or less um, involving chlorhexidine gluconate. Uh, is it toxic and of course does it stain teeth? Well, we know it stains teeth. But is it really toxic uh, to any particular cell group? Well, uh, two different studies validate uh, that the uh, answer to this question is yes. And the aim of this study by Gianelli and uh, his cohorts was to investigate in vitro cytotoxicity of chlorhexidine gluconate on different cell types, um, as we're going to see them, specifically osteoblastic endothelial and fibroblastic cell lines. So, uh, in a nutshell, what they found was, in fact, that chlorhexidine gluconate, yes, affected cell viability in a dose and time-dependent manner, particularly in osteoblasts. So how significant is that? Well, the data suggests that chlorhexidine gluconate be uh, used with caution in oral surgical procedures. And for a number of us, I think we've abandoned its use because of this particular study, along with this one done by Lee and company, where they again evaluated the mechanisms of cytotoxicity of chlorhexidine in osteobl human osteoblastic cells in vitro. And what they found, absolutely, the levels of, of this particular um, rinse tested inhibited cell growth, proliferation, and collagen synthesis of these respective cells and have significant pot uh, potential for periapical toxicity. So with that said, we've had no use for it in our practice now for three years. It's been replaced completely by Stella Life, the rinse specifically. So question nine uh, would be a logical follow-up now. How do I even use this and what is recommended by the manufacturer, and we certainly follow this to a T, is what's termed the 333 uh, regimen or program. And what is meant by that is there are three different items to use, as we've mentioned. We have the, uh, certainly the rinse, um, the spray, and the gel. And those three items would be recommended to be used three days before surgery, three times a day, hence 333. Three different items to use three days before surgery and three, days, uh, three times rather per day. And that is started again three days in advance. The day of surgery, we will actually place the gel uh, on, the, on the wound site. 
and then have them continue the regimen at home for the duration of what's called a recovery kit. And that is the small box that all three of these items come in. So again, step one is the oral rinse. Uh, the idea here is to rinse for approximately two minutes and then expectorate. That would be then followed by the use of the spray. Typically four sprays under the tongue. This allows for uh, very good vascular um, absorption, active ingredients in the spray. And then this is followed by uh, step three, which is use of the gel on the site. Now, you may ask, in advance of surgery, three days you're saying to use this, uh, where would the patients know to use it to place the, the gel? Because the rinse is obvious throughout the mouth and the spray under the tongue, but how about the gel? Well, the gel should be placed certainly where whatever surgical sites are anticipated, and we would explain that to our patients certainly during our consultation. For example, if we're working only a mandibular arch, uh, specifically right posterior, well then that would be the area that they would apply the gel, whether it's on the facial, lingual aspect, uh, the crest of the ridge, etc. So the 333 uh, program uh, we recommend using, uh, yes, that's how, what we do more or less in our practice, along with, along with use of the pain pack uh, protocol, as I mentioned. So that's the one-two punch that we have really um, enjoyed using now over these three years and can only tell you that patient satisfaction has been nothing short of remarkable. Uh, our folks more or less get addicted to the rinse itself, and, um, and it's remarkable, I feel, to have that kind of feedback. It's very rewarding for us, for patients to come back uh, postoperatively and say, wow, thanks. So at the end of the day, it's about quality of life, uh, no question. Uh, we all love the idea of being able to help our patients. That's why we're in this particular wonderful profession of dentistry. We're rewarded as clinicians knowing that our patients come back to us and thanking us uh, for um, being able to help them in any way that we can. So without a doubt, Stella Life product line to me has made a huge difference in the way we're able to handle our patients postoperatively for pain management and certainly from an accelerated wound healing standpoint less edema in general, less echomosis, and I can go on and on. So we are transforming lives any way we look at it. And uh, I can only say that um, I'm grateful. Stella Life, amazing people, amazing product line. Thank you so much.